Hello, hello, welcome to my channel. I'm Joyce Scola. Today we are gonna be talking about different tips and tricks for designing your own yoga flows or flows for your yoga classes. The number one tip that I have is learning all the different categories of poses and understanding how those types break down within the categories. So for instance, you have types of poses like standing, kneeling, open, closed, and learning how you can move through those naturally is really important and the different poses within each of those categories. And then there's also like the energy of poses. So some poses are very stimulating and heating to the body. And so you want to practice those in the morning or if you're feeling lethargic and you know need more stamina, things like that. And then some poses are very cooling and grounding. So having a good understanding of poses, their energetic effects, when to use them and how to apply them is very important for building a sequence either for yourself or for your yoga class. This is something that I'm going to be covering in my online yoga training that you can check out joyscola.com or email me for more details, but our live version will be starting January 4th. Number two, is practice, practice, practice. So especially if you are a yoga instructor, we tend to lose ourselves in teaching and let our home practice kind of fall away. It is so crucial, super important for you to keep your home practice, even if it's something that you just do five minutes one day, 20 minutes the next, an hour here and there understanding how the poses feel in your body and how they relate to each other as you transition from one to the next is what is going to elevate you as an instructor. Many teacher trainings will teach you about cueing for poses and flows, but to truly understand them and how they relate to you is how you're going to be able to show up more authentically and be more present with yourself and your classes. For instance, one of the things I discovered when having my own home practice is having my feet flexed to try and stretch my hamstrings actually wasn't as effective as pointing my toes. I felt such a deeper stretch in my hamstrings when I started to do that and actually toggle between the two while keeping my knees slightly bent. And then when I brought that into my yoga class and actually asked the question, okay, flex your toes, feel here, point your toes, feel here, where do you feel the most stretch in your hamstrings? A good portion of the class, if not most or all of the class said when they pointed their toes in the forward fold is actually when they felt their hamstring stretch. So again, we can be told to do certain things or not to do certain things, but we're only working with the information we are told and it's not until that we actually learn to apply those methods in our body and truly understand and feel into ourselves will we be able to then teach more authentically and be more equipped for teaching. So once you understand how things all correlate and feel, you won't have to plan so much. You'll be able to just drop in to yourself or the energy and the needs of the room and be able to just kind of go off the cuff of, you know, oh, this pose feels good after this pose and this kind of comes naturally after that and this is good for this sort of need. Again, we'll also cover that in my online sequencing training that is good for teachers and non-teachers alike. Joyscola.com, link is in the bio. My third tip is to think about what your goal is. Say it's to stretch the shoulders because the shoulders are really tight. Think of the opposite action that was causing those tight shoulders. So say someone is at a desk all day and their shoulders are slumped forward and their neck is going forward. We want to think of what's the opposite of that action. So a lot more back bends, heart openers, um, things that can stretch the spine like inversions, down dog, anything that you can think to counter what it is they're doing all day to cause that pain. But then you also want to think of what can support that. So again, with the shoulders slumping forward, we actually want to strengthen the muscles that help to keep our shoulders back in our posture more upright. So you can do stuff like a reverse tabletop, doing dips with the elbows, anything that will help to strengthen and support those muscles will help to alleviate the pain. So you can think of this for anything and as well as energy. Um, energy is really important to meet the energy where it's at and then shift the energy from there. A good example is like a baby crying. You'll see the mom kind of match the baby's frequency like, oh, oh no, no, what's going on? Oh, it's okay. And 
then you'll see like their voices will start to soften, their bodies will start to soften, like it's okay, everything's all right. So they're meeting that energy and then they're helping to shift that energy to where they want it to go. So say you're feeling really lethargic in the morning, you're not going to be one inspired or motivated to just jump into a super fast paced power yoga and that might not feel really good. You might feel like you're forcing yourself into something and could potentially injure yourself or just demotivate yourself. It's important to maybe start with some gentle yin or restorative stretches, um, move a little bit more slowly, mindfully, and then as you start to work the energy in your body, you can build up the pace and the difficulty level or the challenge level to then work that energy up so you or your students feel really refreshed or awake after walking off the mat. And then my little bonus tip, this is specifically for instructors, a great way to memorize a pre-planned flow is to go through each pose in your flow while saying it in your head and for how long or how many breath counts you're going to be holding it for. So for example, just like sun salutations, I'll, I'll do a really micro version. I'll just stand up mountain pose five and I'll tell myself five breaths and then I'll fourfold one breath, halfway lift one breath, all the way up back bend, standing back bend one breath, exhale to fourfold. And then I just kind of move really fast. So even if I'm holding something like warrior two for 10 breaths, I will hold it for just one breath and say 10 breaths and then move into my next pose. And I go through the whole sequence like that, maybe one to three times. And then that way I feel it in my body and I kind of have everything sequenced from there. But then also learning to just let that go and trust in yourself, trust in your training and trust in your own practice. That's why going back to number two, it's important to have your own practice because then you're more able to just flee free flow through the sequence. And if someone is in front of you, you have this whole, you know, ha hand balancing, we're doing dolphins and crow pose and all this stuff. And then there's like three people in your class with wrists and hand problems or shoulder pain, you're going to be like, well, how can I adjust? And so being on the spot is also really important to learn and that takes a lot of trust and a lot of self-practice. I hope that these tips and tricks have helped you. What would you say is your biggest roadblock or obstacle when, when it comes to planning your own practice or practice for others? And what would you like to learn more about? Like chakras, energy, anatomy, anything like that? Leave it in the comments below. Let's talk about it. Also, I will be doing my live version of my online sequencing training starting January 4th. It's going to be an eight week course. We're going to meet twice a week via Zoom. So the first day that we meet will be about two hours and it'll be lesson and practicum. And then the second day out of that week that we meet will be another practicum with questions. So we'll really only be meeting 16 times out of those eight weeks. And then there will be homework and such like that and check-ins and a private Facebook group. So I'll be there for you every step of the way. This first course will be discounted with limited spots. And then after that, it's going to be going to record it and the price will be going up. So if this is something you feel like you're interested in and yoga is on your new year's resolution list or someone you know has yoga on their resolution list then this is the course for them and be sure to reach out to me let me know if you have any questions have a beautiful day namaste